Nestled atop a rugged outcrop in the vast expanse of southern Siberia, the seemingly unassuming Chagaskaya Cave was once a bustling home to a family of Neanderthals. This remarkable discovery, detailed in a study published in the journal Nature, brings to light the intimate lives of our ancient relatives like never before. For the first time, scientists have unveiled the genetic ties within a Neanderthal group, identifying a father, his teenage daughter, and two more distantly related individuals, painting a vivid picture of familial bonds thousands of years after they lived. The finding at Chagirskaya Cave, alongside the discovery of seven additional individuals, thought to include a pair of potential cousins from a different family group, and two more Neanderthals from a nearby site, collectively represents the most substantial collection of Neanderthal genomes to date. Such a wealth of genetic information offers unprecedented insights into the social fabric of Neanderthal communities, suggesting they were small, tight-knit, and featured a notable pattern where females often left their birth families to integrate into new groups. Krishna Virama, a population geneticist at Stony Brook University in New York, heralds this as a groundbreaking shift in the study of ancient genomes. While previous research has largely concentrated on mapping the broad strokes of population movements and evolutionary history, this study carves a new path by delving into the personal lives of Neanderthals, unraveling the complexities of their kinship and social structures. The ability to trace the familial relationships and social dynamics of Neanderthal groups with such clarity is a feat that Virama finds nothing short of incredible, highlighting a significant advancement in our understanding of these ancient beings who once shared the earth with modern humans. This research not only adds depth to our knowledge of Neanderthal life, but also underscores the profound connections that bind us across the millennia, offering a glimpse into the everyday lives of individuals who walked the earth tens of thousands of years ago. Perched along the serene banks of the Charish River, within the majestic foothills of the Altai Mountains, lies Chagirskaya Cave, situated a notable 100 kilometers west of the renowned Denisova Cave. The latter has been an archaeological gold mine, revealing evidence that humans, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and even a Neanderthal-Denisovan hybrid once dwelled there, weaving a complex tapestry of habitation over an astonishing 300,000 years. In contrast, Chagaskaya's excavations have thus far exclusively unveiled Neanderthal remains, along with distinctive stone tools, dating these occupants back to a period between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago. A groundbreaking genome sequence analysis in 2020 of a female Neanderthal from Chagirskaya unveiled that she was part of a population distinctly separate from those who had earlier inhabited Denisova Cave. To delve deeper into the life stories of these ancient residents, a dedicated team led by Loritz Skov, a paleogeneticist, and Benjamin Peter, a population geneticist, both from the Max Planck Institute, for evolutionary anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, undertook the meticulous task of extracting DNA from 17 ancient human remains found within Chagaskaya, in addition to several from Okladnikov, a nearby cave. From the remnants of Chagaskaya, primarily teeth and bone fragments, the team was able to sequence complete and partial genomes from 11 individuals. Unfortunately, the samples from Okladnikov were not as well preserved, yielding viable DNA from only two individuals. This wealth of genetic material enabled the researchers to confirm that the inhabitants of Chagirskaya were more genetically akin to their Neanderthal contemporaries in Europe than to those who had settled in Denisova Cave much earlier. The analysis brought a startling revelation to Loritz Skoff, marking a highlight in his career. Among the sequenced genomes, two individuals, a male adult and a teenage female, were found to share half of their DNA. 
a genetic link indicative of a direct parent-child relationship or siblinghood. To pinpoint the exact nature of their connection, the team investigated the mitochondrial DNA, which is passed from mother to offspring. Since the mitochondrial DNA differed between the two, it conclusively pointed to a father-daughter relationship. This discovery not only adds a profound personal dimension to our understanding of Neanderthal lives, but also showcases the sophisticated analytical techniques that can tease out such intimate details from the ancient past, bridging tens of thousands of years to connect us with the familial bonds of those who once roamed the earth. As the research team delved deeper into the genetic intricacies of the Chagaskaya cave inhabitants, they uncovered additional layers of familial connections that further enriched the narrative of Neanderthal's social structures. A fascinating discovery emerged when they noticed that the father, previously identified through his connection to a teenage daughter, possessed two types of mitochondrial DNA, a rare condition known as heteroplasmy. This genetic trait was also found in two other adult males within the cave, hinting at a shared maternal lineage among them. The occurrence of heteroplasmy, as Loritz Skov notes, is typically fleeting, disappearing within a few generations, which strongly suggests that these individuals were contemporaries, living in close proximity to one another during the same time period. The exploration of genetic ties did not stop there. The team went on to identify another set of Neanderthal relatives, a male and a female, who were second-degree relatives akin to cousins. This discovery further expands our understanding of Neanderthal kinship and suggests a complex web of familial relationships within the cave's community. Skov's reflection on the implications of these findings captures the essence of what makes them so captivating. They offer a rare peek into the day-to-day -day lives and interpersonal dynamics of Neanderthal families. It brought tears to the scientists in the team, knowing how similar these humans were to us. The realization that these ancient humans had familial structures akin to our own challenges many preconceived notions about their social lives and adds depth to our understanding of their existence. It's a reminder of the shared humanity that links us across the vast expanse of time, shedding light on the social fabric that underpinned Neanderthal communities and how these early humans related to one another within their families and groups. This glimpse into Neanderthal family life not only enriches our knowledge of our ancient relatives, but also invites us to ponder the complexities of their social interactions and the emotional bonds that might have tied them together. The remarkable increase in the collection of Neanderthal genomes, nearly doubling the previously available data, has opened new avenues for researchers to explore various facets of Neanderthal existence. One intriguing finding from the Chagaskaya cave Neanderthals is the low genetic diversity observed between the maternal and paternal copies of their DNA. This pattern points to a small, closely knit breeding population, a characteristic that is not unique to Neanderthals, but has also been observed in other species, which typically form small communities of fewer than 20 individuals and other species facing threats to their survival. Further analysis revealed a striking contrast in genetic diversity between mitochondrial genomes, which are inherited from mothers and Y chromosomes, passed down from fathers. The mitochondrial genomes showed a much greater diversity, suggesting a dynamic where females frequently moved between communities, integrating genetic material from various Neanderthal populations. This theory is supported by models indicating that such genetic patterns could emerge if a significant proportion of women in these small groups were born in different communities. Carl Lalueza Fox, a leading paleogeneticist and director of the Natural Sciences Museum of Barcelona, Spain, sees this evidence as indicative 
of a common social structure among Neanderthals. His team's analysis a decade ago of Neanderthals buried in a Spanish cave revealed similar patterns of diverse mitochondrial DNA among females but not males, interpreted as a sign that women were the ones who moved between communities. This mobility may have facilitated encounters and interbreeding with Homo sapiens in various parts of Eurasia. However, some scientists urge caution, pointing out that Neanderthal groups in different regions or times may have followed varied social customs, and a broader data set is needed to draw firm conclusions. Adding to the complexity of Neanderthal social life, Rebecca Rag Sykes, an archaeologist at the University of Liverpool, UK, expresses astonishment at the discovery of remains from many related individuals at a single site, given their nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle. The presence of both baby and adolescent teeth from the same individual suggests a strong connection to the site, either through prolonged stays or frequent returns. This pattern challenges previous assumptions about Neanderthal mobility and settlement, hinting at a possible tendency to maintain or repeatedly return to certain locations, perhaps due to their significance within the community or the resources they offered. Chagaskaya Cave, beyond its significance as a home to Neanderthals, appears to have played a crucial role as a strategic hunting ground. The abundance of bison and horse remains found within suggests that the cave was ideally situated to take advantage of these animals' seasonal migrations, serving as a sort of hunting camp. Lawrence Skov and his team proposed that these hunting activities likely provided not just sustenance, but also unique opportunities for interaction between different Neanderthal communities. Rebecca Rag Sykes supports this view, suggesting that while such meetups might not have been deliberately planned, the seasonal congregations around abundant resources would naturally facilitate encounters between groups, fostering exchanges and possibly even the blending of communities. The narrative of the Neanderthal inhabitants of Chagaskaya Cave is far from complete, with only a third of the cave excavated and less than a quarter of the discovered Neanderthal remains analysed, the potential to uncover more about the lives of these ancient people is immense. Skov expresses hope that future research will not only expand our understanding of the Neanderthal family structures, but also unearth more direct familial connections, such as the teenage girl's mother, who he suspects might also be among the remains yet to be studied. This anticipation underscores the ongoing excitement and potential for new discoveries within Chagirskaya Cave, each of which promises to add depth to our understanding of Neanderthal social organization, lifestyle, and their interactions with the environment and each other.